Hi, this is David Sarita from davidsarita.co. Um, I was born in 1961. My my father was uh, got a PhD in educational psychology from UC Berkeley. And my four brothers and I and my mom, when uh, we all grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area in the 60s movement. And, you know, on my way home from school one day at the age of seven, I saw a flying saucer, pandemonium on the streets. And, and that event would really have a huge impact on my future because I could never forget about it. And I used to watch Star Trek as a kid. I was a bit of a sci-fi, you know, fan growing up, dreaming about being an astronaut one day. And, you know, when I was in my school years, I took law, got the highest marks in my class, you know, in the high school level. I took physics. And, um, you know, when I came upon the works of Nikola Tesla and started studying his patents, it, it really threw me in a different direction because I couldn't understand why a genius at this level was not being taught in our school systems. And and the more I studied physics, the more I became interested in much more advanced concepts for energy, technology, and propulsion systems. And I realized that our current understanding and knowledge of those systems was so weak and that I wanted to know more and I didn't want to be peer reviewed in the traditional sense of, of you know, finishing a degree in physics. And so I decided to study on my own and I actually studied Tesla very, very thoroughly. And, you know, with the, the influence of my father, I, I was introduced to the practices of meditation and breathing techniques and, and natural techniques for expanding one's consciousness. And I grew up with that and started practicing these techniques every single day in my early teen years all the way forward to the present day so i really developed a an understanding of how human consciousness works what it takes to take human consciousness to a much more expanded and higher frequency state but i also found that there were there were tools and techniques used in in the history of the bible that also were used as tools to bring the the priests to higher and higher states of consciousness that it wasn't just as simple as believing in in a religion and following basic practices that there were really really deep practices so i've kind of merged science and spirituality and actually in the early 90s i met and started working with an mit phd physicist professor at rutgers university bogdan castle maglich who was from the same country as Tesla, and in fact, was instrumental in bringing the statue bust of Tesla to the memorial at uh, Westinghouse's Niagara Falls power plant. And Maglich actually was pursuing a form of nuclear fusion energy, an environmentally benign form of energy. And it spent over 25 million research dollars on it. And I became part of the, his team in about 1994 and I worked with Maglich and Associates for about 22 years. And I had access to the, some of the biggest names in the physics community in the world, people like Murray Gelman, who won the Nobel Prize, Discover of Quarks, Norman Rostocker, who won the Maxwell Prize in physics, which is higher than the Nobel Prize, um, um, Glenn Seaborg, who chaired the Atomic Energy under um, Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon, and his assistant, Albert Giorso, probably one of the most brilliant particle physicists in the world. And, and working for physicists, my job was to translate the Greek of, of not understanding Greek physics into layperson's ter terms and do a lot of military communications and a lot of communications in the financial sector, which included NASA. I, I, did, I did all the correspondences with um, Earl Van Lanningham, who was director of propulsion, power, and energy at NASA. In, in the 90s, and Earl was very interested in this form of energy. He was tired of the space shuttles, you know, solar panel systems with very limited power. And Earl actually told me that Maglitch's nuclear fusion drive fusing deuterium and helium-3, which is found in moon dust, could send spacecraft up to a tenth the speed of light, which would be the most advanced propulsion system of all time. In fact, that's a velocity greater than the Navy has tracked these unidentified flying objects at, which, which peak 
somewhere in the radar at around 80,000 miles an hour, and our fighter jets are fighting to do two and a half thousand miles an hour. So that gives you a comparison, right? So I, I really studied technology, and then I started developing my own technology, you know, around the year 2000. I had this, I started having visions, blinding visions of Christ in 1994, which started to happen very periodically. And these blinding visions of Christ shining like way, way brighter than our sun, Jesus started teaching me. And I wrote a book called Face to Face with Jesus Christ, which still there are used copies of on Amazon today, a, a work that was actually stolen by my publisher and I was never remunerated for. And I, I started again getting this ability to perceive world and and personalities beyond our world i could actually see them i actually saw christ standing in front of me shining with this enormous enormous power that i'm talking about and one day in in in, in the year 2000 i still have my original note on this there was tesla shining with light not nowhere near as bright as christ but with two other angelic beings wearing white robes with golden cords and Tesla blasted into my consciousness this vortex mathematical model. Incredible, incredible model, which I called the galaxy clock. And in about the year 2000, I started appearing in world media. I started appearing on Art Bell, and my initial appearances on Art Bell had 35 million people watching. And I became a regular on the Art Bell show, and, and, and dozens of radio shows were calling me after those interviews to talk to me, talk to me and go deeper and deeper and deeper into my understanding of the UFO phenomena and the anti-gravity phenomena and advanced technology phenomena. And I have actually appeared on CNN Anderson Cooper with Dan Aykroyd to release my film with Dan Aykroyd, Unplugged on UFOs. I started appearing on, I appeared in Peter Jennings' UFO special, the, the History Channel, the Learning Channel, the first couple of seasons of Ancient Aliens I appeared in and they asked me back, and I frankly turned them down because I thought they were editing me out too much and not really letting me share my my deeper understanding. And I started um, going on literally hundreds of radio shows, reaching between 30 and 50 million people a year in in the period between 2000 and about, you know, and the current day. And, and, and the current day, you know, even though I also was used as a regular on Fox News to do UFO stories in in the 2000 period, 2000 to 2010, I was kind of a regular featured UFO speaker for Fox News. And so I started developing coil systems for therapy and healing and, and, and also for, for raising human frequency and consciousness and expanding consciousness. In fact, my coil systems like these double vortex counter-rotational 14-pointed star coil systems are very unlike Tesla's. T Tesla's coils were cylindrical, flat squares and flat circles. He didn't really build coils that involved uh, meaningful geometry, but he was the father of, and, and, uh, of the the earliest coil systems and in fact in the books of moses god tells moses to put a copper serpent which is a symbolic language for a copper coil on a pole in the bible books of moses god tells moses to put a copper fiery serpent which is which is the language of symbols it's not an actual serpent a copper serpent would be a coil of copper on a pole fiery, meaning it's radiant, meaning it radiates energy. And in fact, that's exactly what Nikola Tesla did. And his first simple coils were used to transmit the very first radio signals on Earth. In fact, the U.S. Supreme Court rules June 21st, 1943, that Tesla, Sir Oliver Lodge, and Stone are the true fathers of radio, and that Marconi borrowed Tesla's patents to demonstrate a, a radio broadcast across the Atlantic. So Tesla is really really duplicating what the God of the Bible was, was saying. And I think he understood it the same way I did. So my coil systems today at davidsradio.co are used to expand human consciousness, but also for therapeutic reasons, 
and and there there is there is there's ample evidence there to show it has a profound impact on disease but with the caution that we can't scientifically prove medically or state medically legally that that frequencies have any impact on this but here's one thing i found very interesting nikola tesla lived and worked in extremely high voltage and high frequency environments and in fact he exposed his body to millions of volts of electricity running directly through his nervous system several times to demonstrate that when voltage is and current at are at high frequencies they're not harmful to the body and the fact that tesla was around energy fields that were in the range of several tesla meaning tesla as a unit of magnetic field strength and today when we think of you know measuring um, background radiation on on a on a on a gauss meter and you might see upwards of two or three milligauss, which is a thousandth of a gauss. So there's a thousand milligauss in a gauss. And then you take a gauss times 10,000 and you're at one Tesla. So, so my systems produce fields of energy that are beautiful and harmonic. And because the human nervous system has a magnetic field that has been proven and measured at Dartmouth College, the human heart has a magnetic field, the human brain has a magnetic field. We therefore can receive frequencies in the same way we, we are affected by musical frequencies. We can therapeutically, just like the way we respond to music, alter the way we feel and, and, and tune the way we feel with, uh, with uh, tuned what I call tuned magnetic field instrumentation. And we see evidence of this in the Bible. Right. We see the, the 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 temple measurements of the Holy of Holies, and then we see the Ark of the Covenant with its measurements. We see the staffs of the of Moses and Aaron and the twelve tribe members, and we also see Jesus in Mark six one through eight, ref telling the apostles that when he disperses them across the planet to preach the gospel and to do healings and to ward off evil, that the apostles must have their their staffs with them. So I, I actually did years of research into, into the staff as an instrument, as a frequency instrument, and found that not, not unlike an antenna, that it, it act, an antenna's height, a monopole antenna's height is one quarter of the wavelength of the energy it transmits and receives that. So therefore, if a staff had a copper coil on it, and it was a it was a metallic pole, it would act as a tuner receiver transmitter to the human nervous system, which means that God wanted the the prophets to have their nervous system tuned almost in a way musically at these very, very high frequencies. And I was able to do the math, find out the true length of the staff of Moses and the apostles, and therefore know its frequency, which is really the God frequency. And I also found in the in studying in the Bible the breastplate of Aaron, and and many other devices, including the temples itself. That that doing the mathematics of the speed of light in inches divided by the wavelength in inches, I could determine the frequencies of the holy temples, of the Ark of the Covenant, of the staffs, and therefore develop these tools for use for people today. And people who use these systems have profound experiences. They have profound, they, they can legally report to testify to their own healing in their own body, even though medically you can't actually state or prove that, but people can testify to what they've, uh, how my systems have, have changed people's lives. And now we're in the process of trying to get this talk technology into standard stereo speakers so that speakers can transmit full frequency range sound. So if you buy a speaker today, most of them start at 38 or 40 hertz at the bottom, but humans can hear from 20 to 20,000 hertz. And then human brains operate between a half a hertz all the way all the way up to the upper parts of, of the audio spectrum, past, actually past 20,000 hertz. So our nervous system and brain 
have this huge capacity, but our stereo systems can't put that capacity out. With my systems added to a stereo system, you can actually transmit full range frequencies. And, and that's for the benefit, the benefit of, of the human experience. Now, I ne it never made sense to me. How could the speed of light be exactly 186,282 miles per second? Instead of point something miles, it ends at the two, right. 186,282, instead of 182 point something. So, Crystal, how did you know that? Um, I just knew instinctually, um, you know, when you work from your center a lot, you just have mm -hmm. feelings about what's, or knowings, not yeah, even absolutely. feelings, yeah. it was just a knowing. Yeah that it was off and it wasn't precise enough and sure enough when he um decodes things he gets down well, to the exact decimal of that i looked into the early mickelson morley experiments and dirt which were done in irvine california in this tunnel right when they were trying to define the speed of light as an absolute measurement mm -hmm.